Hi, I'm Samuel. Welcome back to Smashing Pillars TV. I'm so glad that you could join us for this third uh, episode. We've been talking to Guy Coburn, good friend of mine from uh, Florida, and I just want to welcome you back. Good to see you, man. Yeah, yeah. These last two episodes have been amazing and uh, just packed with a lot of uh, revelation for you. And uh, also, he's going to share what's on his heart that you know God's just laid something on his heart for the body of Christ. So. Get your Bible, get a notebook, get a pen, and get ready to be blessed. Yes, sir. Yeah, welcome back, brother. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I just have a message today. Um, this is something that the Lord uh, has put on my heart, maybe even in the past couple of years, something that God has really shown me that, that He's seeking to establish uh, within, his, within His people. Mm -hmm. You know, God's, I, I call it God's heart, mm -hmm. you know, for, for His people. And... Um, kind of a foundation scripture comes out of second chronicles 16 when it says that the the eyes of the lord are searching to and fro mm -hmm. uh, after a you know a heart that's fully after him right and um you know i believe that god is you know seeking to establish a people who are, are wholly his mm -hmm. you know who are completely given over Amen. to his to his lordship yeah, to yeah. his kingdom you know so that so that we can establish the purposes of god on Amen. earth you know and so <laughs> Yeah, and so uh, most of most of what I'm going to be talking about is out of Ezekiel chapter four. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously, you know the Lord, the Lord has different people for different things. Sure. But I but I do believe that uh, um, our our example is Jesus, right? Sure. Absolutely. And and I believe that this is almost the type and shadow kind of of what Jesus did when he when he came to earth. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously it's through Ezekiel, but Mm -hmm. But but you know I'll show you the correlation. Mm -hmm. uh, so so basically, if I could just maybe just do some reading. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in Ezekiel chapter four, it says in verse one, it says, "And you, son of man, take a brick and lay it before you, and engrave on it a city, even Jerusalem, and put siege works against it, and build a siege wall against it, and cast up a mound against it, set camps also against it, and plant battering rams against it all around. And you take an iron griddle." And place it as an iron wall between you and the city, and set your face toward it, and let it be a state of siege, and press the siege against it. This is a sign for the house of Israel. So obviously, Ezekiel was what we call a sign prophet. He was sure. actually, you know, he was actually the 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 prophecy himself. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just going to keep reading a little bit. Okay. Uh, it says, and then lie on your left side, and place the punishment of the house of Israel upon it. For the number of the days that you lie on it, you shall bear their punishment. For I assign you a number of days, 390 days, equal to the number of the years of their punishment. So long shall you bear the punishment of the house of Israel. And when you have completed these, you shall lie down a second time, but on your right side, and bear the punishment of the house of Judah. Forty days I assign you a day for each year, and you shall set your face toward the siege of Jerusalem with your arm barred, and you shall prophesy against the city. And this is the verse that I want everybody to focus on. And behold, I will place cords upon you, so that you cannot turn from one side to the other till you have completed the days of your siege. Wow. And so, yeah, this is really powerful. So mm -hmm. God tells Ezekiel to lay on his side, his left side, for 390 days. Mm -hmm. uh, and Ezekiel listens to him. Mm -hmm. And then he tells him to turn over and lay on your side for 40 days, uh, a, year for, a year for each day. Um, I believe that this is a, a picture um, of God wanting his people to lay down their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, I know he's talking about the punishment of Israel here, but we see Jesus, right? It said that he only did what he saw the Father doing, right, right. and he only said what he heard the Father saying. Mm -hmm. And so I believe it's this picture of com being completely given over to God, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. in, in all reality, you know, we weren't created for ourselves, mm -hmm. right? We were created for the glory of God, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And so, and so this is just something that the Lord has really put on my heart for people, you know, people who are called by God, you know, and, and, you know, the Bible says that many are called, but few are chosen. But the reality is, is that few make the choice. Right, that's, that's, right. that's really what that mm -hmm. means. You could even say it as, you know, many are invited, but few refuse the invitation, mm -hmm. or, you know, right. few, few refuse, or refuse to answer or accept the invitation mm -hmm that's been given to them. Yeah. And so I, I, I truly believe that God, 
has a remnant of people for this last time that are going to give themselves over completely to him. Yeah, and you know what I've seen it also, he says to him, and I'll, I'll bind you with cords, right? Uh -huh. So if you answer this call, Ezekiel, um, you may not want to complete it, <laughs> but I'll see to it that I keep you in your place wow. until it's done. Just wow. answer the call. That's all you have to do. That's so good. Yeah. And, yeah. and I agree with that because a lot of times when we, when we answer the call, th this is actually something that the Lord has shown me is that when he finds a man who's willing, what he does is he begins to put desires in that man's heart. Mm -hmm. And the man doesn't necessarily, he might know that it's God's desire or he might not. He just knows that it's a desire. And then what happens is, is that man begins to pray. Mm -hmm. And you begin to pray out the desires of God mm -hmm. that God has but, placed on your heart. Yeah. But what you don't know is what comes along after that. Right, right. And like you said, you, know, you, you realize that by the time that prayer is answered, that it wasn't necessarily the prayer that you prayed, mm -hmm. but it was the answer for the prayer that you prayed. Yeah. It, you know, it, it also reminds me of uh, the binding of Isaac. Or he tells Abraham, bind me securely so that when I feel the knife on my throat, wow. I don't move and defile the offering of God. I see the same thing there. God's saying, just lay it down, lay your life down, and I will bind you securely so you do not defile the sign I'm about to make you into to the wow. nation of Israel. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, these are the people that I believe that God is raising up yeah. uh, for this last time, yeah. you know, is, is that... God, God wants a people that are His. Mm -hmm. you, know, they, you know, God is looking for people's hearts that are, that are fully after Him. Amen. You know, that they're not sidetracked by the world or mm -hmm. sidetracked by different things, but just people that, that love Him with all their heart. You know, obviously mm -hmm. love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and, and, and love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. And so uh, another scripture in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20, verse 20 and verse 21 it says, and this is kind of, this is kind of even banking off of what we just said, mm -hmm. is though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself any more, but your eyes shall see your teacher, and your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, "This is the way. Walk in it." Mm -hmm. When you turn to the right, or when you turn to the left. We just prophesied the people in the last episode. God's going to open your ears, cut some relationships. He's going to bring people into your life that are going to mentor you and teach you. Exactly. This is the way walk in it. And, so, and this that's, is that's literally. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, this, mm -hmm. is the, this is the heart of God that we would listen to him, even mm -hmm. in the small things. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, I just have a quick testimony that uh, I was actually going to the beach one time to meet uh, with a youth group, uh, with a pastor, and I... Um, I parked a car and, and I had no idea where they were. I just parked a car and, and I was walking down this road and it's a super long road with a lot of different entrances to go out onto the beach. And I didn't know where they were and, and I was trying to call and nobody answered the phone. And, and so I just was walking and I heard the Lord say, turn right. Mm -hmm. I heard him say, turn <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I immediately turn right and I walk over the sand mound and there they come right towards me. Wow. And I was literally about to walk right past it, yet the Lord said, turn right. Mm -hmm. And so this is, this is what the Lord's looking for, for people to mm -hmm. listen to him right. and be obedient, even, yeah. even in the small things. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and a lot of times it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. you know, obviously, God told Ezekiel to lay on his side for 390 days. That doesn't, it doesn't make sense to the natural mind. You know, faith in following God mm -hmm. in obedience does not make sense to the natural mind. And that's mm -hmm. why a lot of people don't live by faith, because mm -hmm. there's no element of comfort in faith. Yeah. But that's why he gave us the comforter. Right, right. So Amen. that we can be comfortable mm -hmm. in, in uncomfortable situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, Amen. so obviously, you know, God, God is looking for lovers, mm -hmm. but he's looking for laid down lovers. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I do believe that that's why, you know, Ezekiel was laying down. He, mm -hmm. was, a, he was a laid down man mm -hmm. for, for the kingdom of God. And it's the same way how Jesus said that no man takes my life, but I lay it down. Yeah. Right. So and then it says no greater love than this, than a man, a friend that, you know, a man that lays down his life for his friends. So I believe that God is calling us into a, a, a laid down life. Mm -hmm. And so for even the people watching, you know, God has called you. Mm -hmm. He has put things on your heart. He he has uh, told you things to do. 
and you haven't listened or, or maybe you've kind of procrastinated or, or even put it off. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Lord is even just telling you now. I know it's a hard message maybe for some, but, but really it's all about just a relationship with God. Right. You know, it's about just following Him, mm -hmm. you know, because obviously He knows the best for us. And mm -hmm. all things work out for the good of those who love God and called according to His purpose. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, one thing that, 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 you know, God had to really give me a revelation, in, and I know this sounds super elementary, but He gave me a revelation that He's good. No, that God, no, that no. God, that God is good. I know that mm -hmm. sounds super simple, but when you know that God mm -hmm. is good, you know that everything that you're doing mm -hmm. uh, is is His goodness for you. Yeah. That mm -hmm. that He never is thinking evil towards you. That mm -hmm. every route that you take is is um, for your good. Yeah. And God yeah. is always trying to reroute you to destiny, even when you make mistakes. Yeah, I remember a time when uh, I was at a place where I needed God to show up. I mean, this, it, was a, it was a big deal. God needed to show up because I had no other way of making it through this situation I was in. And I was really concerned. I was very concerned. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, have I ever, give me one example oh, wow. when I didn't show up in your That's life. So or true. give me one example when I failed you. One. And I said, none. You know, none. Yeah. You've always been faithful. Amen. Yeah, amen. And he has. He has. Yeah. And, and that's true that when, when, you, when you follow God in this way, mm -hmm. when you follow God in complete obedience and, and, and you lay down your life, he's always there to protect you in mm -hmm. every situation. He'll take you through every trial, every mm -hmm. tribulation, every mountain, every valley, every, everything. Mm -hmm. He'll take you through everything and he'll speak to you in the midst of it. Just like this. It said, if the Lord, even though the Lord takes you, gives you the bread of adversity, the mm -hmm. water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself anymore. Mm -hmm. He'll speak to you continually. Mm -hmm. You know, and I believe that. Amen. You know, uh, and, and even on this, you know, this is kind of the, well, you know, the narrow road, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know, this is something that the Lord showed me in, in, in Matthew 7, you know, 13 and 14. I know it's a popular scripture. It says, broad is the way. Mm -hmm. And wide is the gate, which mm -hmm. leads to destruction. Mm -hmm. But straight is the gate, and mm -hmm. narrow is the way, which leads to life. And few be there who find it. Now, a lot of times we look at that as heaven and hell, mm -hmm. which, which it very well could be. But also the Lord showed me that it says straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leads to life. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. word life is, is not only eternal life. That mm -hmm. word life, zoe, mm -hmm. is is vitality, it's mm -hmm. being animate, it's walking with the very life of God. So when, so when you walk with the life of God, you're able to bring His kingdom upon the mm -hmm. earth, wherever you are. Mm -hmm. You know, people who aren't laid down to God, God can't flow through them. No. You know, I mean, obviously God can use them, but, but mm -hmm. He can't flow through them to the capacity that, that He desires mm -hmm. to yeah. bring His kingdom mm -hmm. upon the earth. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we can literally bring the kingdom of God on the earth by laying down our lives. Everywhere we go. And that's what he wants. He right. wants us to manifest the kingdom. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. Which is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and obviously, you know, establishing his covenant, you know, with his people. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, another thing, I just, want, I just want to encourage people right now to, to listen to God. Mm -hmm. You know, listen to his voice. Whatever you do, mm -hmm. you know, seek to hear his voice. Because he's everything, you know. If the question the question is is if we're not following God and listening to His voice, then whose voice are we listening to? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Right. If we're not listening to His voice, there's only two other voices. Mm -hmm. It's it's people or yourself or the devil. Mm -hmm. And so if if we're not being led by the Spirit of God or we're, or we're not being led by the voice of God, then then we're being led by a different spirit. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to be led by a different spirit mm -hmm. because you know. It's just, it's just not God's heart for us. Yeah, you know, and another thing too, if you feel like, well, I, you know, I don't hear God's voice. I try to, like everyone else hears his voice, but I don't. Take a look, at, take an inventory of your life. Are you listening to things you shouldn't be listening to? Are you watching things you shouldn't be watching? You know, are you saying things you shouldn't be saying? And if you are, shut those things down. I, I would say just test it for a couple of weeks. Shut it all down. Put it aside. Close those doors. And then, and, and God doesn't need your permission, but he wants you to be in agreement with him at least. Just say, God, I give you permission to come into my life. I give you permission to speak to me. And, and, and two things I would, I would encourage you to do. Ask the Lord to teach you the questions you should be asking him right now. What should I be asking you right now? 
and you'll see that things will drop in your heart that you never would have thought to ask. Yeah. And also, show me the things about myself that the devil doesn't want me to know about myself. Because God has placed gifts in you, placed talents in you, things that he wants you to use to manifest and further his kingdom here on earth. And the enemy will try to condemn you and try to say, God can't use you. You, you look what you just did, you know. Yeah. But if you ask him those two things, you're basically what you're saying is open my ears and open my eyes. And he'll do it. He'll do it. I've seen him do it so many times. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And just to you know, go off that, you know, God speaks uh, in many ways. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, matter of fact, let's just turn to the book of Job. You know, I know you quoted this, actually. You paraphrased it in one of the episodes in Job uh, chapter 33. It's like one yeah. of my favorite passages. No, it's in, it's in Job. It says that God speaks. Here it is. Job chapter 33. For God speaks in one, one way and in two, though man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on men, while they slumber on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and terrifies them with warnings that he may turn man aside from his deed and conceal pride from man, and, and he keeps his soul from the pit. And so God speaks in many ways. Mm -hmm. You know, he speaks in dreams. He speaks mm -hmm. in visions. God speaks through men. He speaks through, um, the, he speaks through nature. He speaks mm -hmm. through many different things. And so uh, just to encourage you, you know, keep your, keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, and just know that, that God is continually trying to speak to you. Mm -hmm. He's always trying to get our attention. Many times we're just not perceptive. We're not, we're not listening. So mm -hmm. even now, I actually just want to just pray mm -hmm. uh, over the people that, sure. that God would give them uh, revelation and understanding mm -hmm. and just help them perceive when God is speaking to them. So let's just okay. pray. So. Father, I thank you. Thank you Lord, I thank you that you would give your people a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, God, and that the eyes yes, of their Lord. understanding would be enlightened, Lord. that they may know what the hope of your Lord. calling Lord. is and the inheritance that is in the saints. And God, Lord. I just pray right now that you would open up people's Lord. eyes, open up their ears, God, give them the ability to perceive perceive you speaking God wherever they are wherever they are whenever they're in a place where yes. they can't hear you God that they can simply just lift up their hands and open their ears and that they will be able to hear your voice in the name of Jesus so father I pray yes. that you would just speak to your people through everything yes, Lord. in Jesus name yes and father we just impart you said freely you receive freely you should give away so Lord everything that you've given to me everything that you've given to to God, we freely impart yes, that to the viewer right now, Lord. Every gift that you've given us, every talent, every anointing, every mantle, Lord, and I thank you, Father, that at the appointed times, the times that you've set for them, they will begin to walk in those things, and we freely give that to you right now in Jesus' mighty name. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. You can't do anything for it. It's a yeah. free gift. All you have to do is receive it by faith and ask the Lord to begin to teach you how to walk in it, and uh, he will, for sure. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just a it's kind of funny, you know, but but just the way that the Lord speaks to me is yeah. actually through license plates. Mm -hmm. Really, you know, this is just just to encourage people <laughs> to kind of keep your keep yeah, your awesome. mind, you know, keep yeah. your mind open. Uh -huh. You know, um, I mean, there's many different situations where where, where I've had this happen, but uh, just one, you know, I remember I was in a season where uh, financially uh, I, I was struggling a little bit, and 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 the Lord took me to a discipleship program in 2016, mm -hmm. and and this is just an, an idea of of different ways that God speaks. But I was in a car, and and I was in the back seat on the right side, and and I had been praying. I was, you know, worrying, asking the Lord, like. You know, uh, how am I going to make it through this season? I don't have any money, mm -hmm. and, and so on and so forth. And as, as soon as I thought about money and how, how God was going to provide for me, a car drove right past me, and it said Jireh, mm. as wow. in Jehovah yeah, yeah, Jireh, yeah, yeah. the yeah, Lord yeah. who provides. Mm -hmm. And so even simple things like that, God yeah. is speaking. Yeah, God is yeah. speaking through everything. That's awesome. Um, and, and so many times God will, 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 will show us things. Even the other night, matter of fact, uh, uh, I'll give you a, another another testimony, I was praying about the voice of God, just asking the Lord, praying, God, I want you to speak to me. And I, I said, I want to hear your voice. As soon as I said, I want to hear your voice, I looked over to my right and there was a 
there was a license plate. It said Cal L. K A L E L, mm -hmm. and if you look it up, it's actually a, a, a fictitious name. Of, 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 uh, I guess it was a Superman or something. But the name in Hebrew actually means the voice of God. <laughs> as soon it. as I said the voice yeah, of yeah. God, yeah, and so yeah. God actually speaks through even the craziest, you know, the craziest things. So, mm -hmm. you know, keep your eyes and ears open and know that God is speaking. Amen. God is speaking. Yeah. Amen. You know, a little bit of a tangent, but you know, kind of goes into the message that when, when we live in obedience and we, and, we, and we live in relationship with God, that He's constantly reaching out to us. He's constantly trying to speak to us, you know, as the teacher mm -hmm. who, who has shown Himself plainly now. And, and God's not trying to hide from us. He, he does want to speak to us. And, and so, yeah. Yeah, and He's always speaking. He's always speaking. I was just sharing with a guy this morning just uh, several dreams that I had. And uh, how the Lord was speaking to me through these three new puppies I have uh, and how the Lord had been speaking me through that, uh, through them. And uh, so, yeah, you're right. He, he does. And the thing is, is you just have to um, shut out all the other noise in order for you to begin to actually pick up on what the Lord is wanting to relay and, and say to you. And you will. Amen. You will. I think this right now, this time that we're living in, especially your generation coming up, is so sensitive to the spirit realm and that's why you see such a a, a, break, a great pull of your generation into the occult you know because we're right. we're actually built to, to to walk in the supernatural mm -hmm. now the occult is a uh it's a counterfeit but people are looking for it people are looking for it and uh, like you said i think god's going to bring healing back to the church and we're going to start seeing supernatural signs and wonders and all those things and I believe that God's going to use that to pull people out of the, the fake or the counterfeit into the real thing. Amen. People know the real thing when they see it. They yeah. do. Absolutely. And obviously, you know, we want to flow in that real thing. And, mm -hmm. and you know, God has actually kind of, you know, sp spoken to me about how heaven flows through dead men. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, <laughs> heaven yeah. flows through dead men. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.15, it says that those who live Mm -hmm. should no longer live for themselves, but for the one who died and gave himself for them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if we can understand that we were created not only uh, by God, but also for God, right. you know, we can realize that our life is not our own. And, and, and the less we focus on ourselves and, and the less that we live in selfishness, we can allow heaven to flow through us. Mm -hmm. So just to encourage people, you know, mm -hmm. don't live for yourself. Right, and that really takes us back to the first episode we were talking about flowing in the prophetic and your gifting and how you said that once God reveals the gifting that he's giving you, then he begins to show you where you character. are as far as your character right. and then begins the process of bringing your character up to the level of your gifting. And, um, and that's what it's really all about. It's about walking with the Lord and it's about your character. That's what he's going to always do. That's why it says in the scriptures and he's faithful to finish this good work that he's begun. Amen. Right until the day of Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. Yeah, amen. yeah. well, you know, the, the more we let go of ourselves, the more we're becoming like God. Mm -hmm. You know, the more we're walking in the Spirit, the mm -hmm. more we're walking in the fruits of the Spirit, mm -hmm. you know, the more we walk in righteousness, peace, joy, love, joy, peace, goodness, mm -hmm. kindness. So mm -hmm. as we begin to let go of ourselves, you know, Jesus can, can live through us. The Holy mm -hmm. Spirit can manifest himself through us um, in a greater measure. And, you know, when we give up ourselves, we actually gain access to the things that God has for us. Mm -hmm. I just want to speak about that for a minute that, you know, as we give up our lives, you know, the Bible says in John 12 that unless a, a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it, it abides alone. Mm -hmm. but, but when that seed dies, it bears forth much fruit. So our lives are literally a seed mm -hmm. for God. The Bible says in, in Romans 12, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, mm -hmm. by the mercies of God, to present your bodies mm -hmm. as a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Mm -hmm. And so we literally worship God mm -hmm. by giving ourselves up to Him mm -hmm. as a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. and, and like he was talking about in Ezekiel, laying, laying down on your side. Mm -hmm. And so it's this picture of us continually laying down our life and, and listening to the voice of God and, and being obedient to Him in, in all things. Amen. So. Amen. Amen. Well, yeah. we're running out of time again. It goes by so fast. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I want to thank you so much for coming thank out. You, sir. A yeah. huge blessing. Huge blessing. I know the body of Christ is going to be blessed by this. And uh, why don't you uh, 
close in prayer. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. yeah, so Father, we just thank you. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the thank people you, listening, God. So I thank you that you are drawing your remnant, God, that you are drawing people to yourself, yes. that you are speaking to them, that, that the purposes that they have, the destinies that they have, that as they lay down their lives, God, that they will come to fulfillment, that, that there's certain things, there's, there's weights and sin that so easily beset us, that, Father, I thank you that you would help these people lay aside all those things, God, so that they can walk in the calling and the destiny that you have for them, God. I pray that you would that you would have a generation of laid down lovers, Father, that you would have people that are going to bring the kingdom of God on this earth, Father, that, that we would walk in kingship, that we would walk in dominion, that we would walk in authority, that we would walk in a realm that no other generation has walked in before. Because we know our God, we will do great exploits, Father. So I thank you that the same anointing that you yes. had upon your son Jesus is the same anointing that is upon us even now. So, Father, we just thank you, and we bless you, Lord, and we just give you all the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty Amen. name. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much, brother. Yes, sir. Uh, we have one last thing to do. You've got to put your hands up in the air, bow your head, and receive this blessing. The Lord bless you, and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom, give you his peace. That's his authority that breaks the yoke, that binds you to chaos. That's the peace that God has placed upon you. And Father, we thank you for doing it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much for joining us. Again, once again, thank you so much for yes, joining sir. us. Thank and, you. Uh, Guy, and we will uh, see you again in the future. Uh, until then, have a great day. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.